okay hey everyone welcome back to the channel uh, so this is the continuation for the MQT exam preparation and this is especially uh, part 2 for the coding preparation so if you haven't seen the part 1 just uh, check in the channel and we also will provide the link in the description just go through that so let's not waste further time let's start with the first question for today uh, the problem statement uh, given a string is consists of a star and asterisk and uh, you can see length is string variable the task is to find the minimum number of star and hash to make it the valid string the string is considered valid if the number of star and are equal okay so equal means zero and if it's greater that's a positive number if it's negative it's a negative number the question seems little off and little confusing but indirectly what they're asking is that you have to find the count of uh, star and also count of hash and you can see uh, star or asterisk whatever you uh, whatever as per your terminology so you can see if this is greater that's a positive number that means they themselves has mentioned that uh, we have to subtract this count minus this count because if the count is bigger for this then only it will become a positive number here and uh, if it's otherwise it will be a negative number that's what it is and if it's equal zero so basically we have to find the count of uh, both the characters okay uh, maybe I'll just open a scribble okay the first question so ideally I guess it's a simple very simple one uh, so what we do uh, calculate the count of this and calculate the count of uh, hash let's suppose this is uh, M this is N we have to print M minus N that's it that's the agenda here uh, so let's let's quickly code it I hope you can the font is visible uh, maybe let's check the string as what is given in the ppt uh, 3 hash okay so we use a little like print of or maybe like string dot count of String dot count of hash. Okay, so this should I give the output? Yeah, let's just run there. Zero. And for suppose the star is high, this should give the posh number one. If the hash is high, this should give the negative number as minus one okay so what is happening here this is fine uh, but uh, if you see um, this star if you are doing dot con here I, as it's a python so i directly did dot con but in any other language if you want to do a for loop and do then also like just initialize a for loop find the count of star then again initialize a for loop find the count of hash it indirectly means the same here as well so but because of this we are iterating one and two two times we are iterating for the string so uh, ideally the uh, what you call the time complexity, uh, complexity will be 2n here so in order to reduce this and the space is just order of 1 because we are not using any extra space here we can just uh, reduce this iteration by just uh, calculating the count in the first uh, loop itself whether it's a for loop or while loop in the first loop itself we can calculate both the counts and we can just print it so maybe I can quickly show you that so let, let's suppose uh, count of star is equal to zero count of hash is equal to zero then <coughs> for i string if i equal to star count star and if i equal hash count hash then at last print count star minus count hash let's run this see minus one let me decrease this and run again zero you can see no, no, maybe i'll maximize this as well we have zero mm. one more time yep so it's working so 
it's a very very basic question and if you remember the first video which we discussed that ideally there will be two questions one will be very easy and second will be you know, easy to medium level so this is the the easy one so the question seems little tricky like what we have to do for evaluation and all but if you see the test cases just they are asking us to find the count count of initial star count of initial hash and just spin the value that's our uh, use case here okay uh, so yeah I uh, this is in Python, but uh, uh, I saw in the previous video that uh, the uh, students are requesting for both C++ Java code as well. So I'll try to prepare, prepare the Java and C++ code and add in the description so that uh, the uh, the same uh, the other language students also will be able to uh, code this. Okay, so maybe I'll move on to the next question. Okay, so we have a matrix question here. We have n by n matrix, which is mean by square matrix, uh, square matrix. Okay, I have to rotate the matrix by 90 degree. Okay, in the clockwise. Okay, and uh, print the resultant matrix. N is the size, n is the continuous, n should be greater than 0. Sample output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 4, 5, 5. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so ideally, what is happening is that you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We are rotating this in the clockwise 90 degrees, just 90 degrees. So this 1, 2, 3 came here, and this 7, 4, 1 came here and 987 that you are seeing here that came here so it just rotated a 90 degree a turn here and if uh, for students who don't know like the basics of matrix like what is a square matrix uh, what is uh, transpose of a matrix what is inverse uh, how to find uh, any other like parameters related to uh, any kind of matrix so maybe just keep that as a homework to list have a basic information about uh, what exactly matrix is uh, so that it will be easy to understand the questions related to matrix and ma matrix question is very very common in any of the exams not just the NQT okay uh, next I guess we can start with the pseudo code we will just scroll up so um, ideally we have uh, so let's do one thing let's write the positions of this so 0 0 0 1 0 2 1 0 1 1 1 2 2 0 2 1 2 2 so this is the indexes if you are taking a two uh, two dimensional array to store the matrix uh, two dimensional array or two dimensional array what uh, sorry two dimensional list whatever it is and uh, both means the same this should be converted into 0 0 should be coming here 0 1 0 2 then 2 0 1 0 then 2 1 2 2 and the re remaining ones so if you see this anyway we don't want to consider because uh, this is the rotation is happening so if you see here um, what is exactly happening is that um, the zero zero if you see uh, just uh, maybe like I'll give a just hint here uh, if you see any kind of matrix problem just try to draw the indexes here and try to find the pattern here like if it's a 90 degree clockwise anti-clockwise no matter whatever is the question just try to find the pattern you can see zero zero is getting converted into uh, the position of this the actual position of this is zero two so this is converted into 0 2 0 1 is getting converted into I mean getting transferred into the location uh, 1 2 and 0 2 is getting transferred into the location uh, I guess this will be 2 2 so let's try to find the pattern here okay um, the numbers if you see the left side digit remains the same and here the right side digit same, uh, remains the same so if we name this terminal as i comma j then you can see the j remains the same this j value is coming here so let's keep this as j that means the next in target will be first will be j so whatever we have the i comma j combination in the first matrix that j will be the first index the next, next, next one, the next position will be, the index of it will be the length minus i minus 1. See, if i is 0, length is uh, 
uh, 3 because it's a square matrix and the given is row number of rows is 3 3 minus 0 minus 1 is 2 so 2 and 3 minus uh, 1 minus 1 uh, oh sorry yeah so this is 0 right so even this is also 2 so again here also 0 so 2 so you can see j n minus i minus 1 so this is the logic that we need so basically what we need we need this, uh, elements of i comma j to be transferred to j of n minus i minus 1 that's it and your uh, job is done so this way we have to find a pattern here uh, so as i told if it's uh, even it's a 90 degree clockwise anti-clockwise whatever it is just try to find the sol uh, solution by drawing you will have a pen and paper so just draw the mat matrix index here so in this index you can see the pattern here that the how exactly the pattern is moving based on that build your logic okay let's try to code this uh, maybe i'll just create a new file matrix um, clockwise okay let's suppose we have a matrix we have a matrix so now uh, we cannot ideally change the location of here to here as the previous location will be lost so instead of that we can what we can do we can create a like a uh, new matrix maybe which might have zero and let's declare the n is nothing but length of matrix zero into n for I in range of n. Oh, I think that's why it's not there. Uh, just a second. Okay. Uh, so this way we'll have a zero uh, zero matrix which will be having the same uh, number of uh, elements as like the above one. Now we have a new matrix. What we decided we want to uh, uh, we'll change the location like this. So let's try to write two for loop for i in range of mm, n for j in range of n okay so new matrix of i comma j sorry new matrix of j comma n minus i minus 1 equal to matrix of i comma j that's what we discussed right so this j comma n should be having the say uh, previous i comma j that we are showing the new matrix and we can print the new matrix let's try to print this yep we got the output maybe for better visibility for the new matrix print row i'll just comment this done again you can see so this is the matrix that is being needed right same 7 for 1 by 8 by 2 9 6 we got the output now uh, okay so this is the brute force approach now let's try to optimize this so what's happening here um, I'll scroll down a bit okay so what's happening here we are doing two iterations uh, that is increasing the time complexity to n square uh, and again uh, we are also utilizing a uh, space complexity of order of n so this is getting extra because we cannot avoid this as any way any kind of logic we have to traverse the complete uh, matrix and we have to uh, anyway have to pass that n square we can reduce maybe by uh, n into l log n maybe uh, but it will not uh, it cannot reduce further than that. but we can concentrate on the space complexity here because that is what important as the test cases in the actual exam to get passed you have to reduce either the space constant or the uh, or the time constant or the both okay so now um, so we need to reduce order of n that means we should not use this new matrix let's try to do that mm, okay maybe i'll comment this so we also uh yeah in the beginning i told right 
that you have to focus on um, learning about what all this like what is transport or this was so now we are going to use the transpose of matrix so you can see um, let's transpose the first upper triangle to this uh, and reverse the elements so if you transpose 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so anyway the diagonal will remain the same 1 5 9 2 will get transposed here 4 will be here and uh, this is 3, right? 3 will be here and 7 will be here okay so I'll just edit it little, uh, it's getting a little confused for a second okay so what exactly we are doing here is we are interchanging these elements that is called transpose okay and uh, the diagonal remains, remains the same so 2 will be replaced with 4 and 3 will be replaced with 7 and 6 will be replaced with 8 okay so we have 1 4 7 this so what is output we need 7 4 1 8 5 2 and 9 6 3 see we have the output but in a reverse order then once we transpose it the second step is to reverse particular row okay we have to reverse this row okay so uh, first step transpose second step reverse okay let's try to code this as well mm. okay we have the matrix we have m we have n j comma we want to do the upper triangle so n comma i plus one then we can just use matrix of i comma j comma matrix of j comma j comma j comma yeah so i want i comma j to be replaced with j comma and j comma i to be replaced with i comma j for uh, even you can use a th third variable and store the a value in the temp and again replace it both means the same okay so once this is done we got the transport the second step we have to reverse it so let's do like per row in row maybe index so index in range of n uh, matrix of row index to matrix index dot remix okay <coughs> no, uh, the reverse itself will do the change so there is there will be no return so matrix row index will reverse it then we just have to print the matrix yeah let's run this nice so we got the output the same output that we expected so this is the optimized way and with this we avoided the space complexity of using a new matrix again okay i'll try to give the both the codes of python java and c++ as well i saw comments for the c++ as well in the description both all three languages for each question the all six codes will be provided in the description and comment below for any doubts and uh, i'll be recording uh, the further videos soon.